Hey, so welcome back, or hey, um, if you don't know, my name is Jerry, and yeah, I, I did say I was not going to go to the library this month, however, I actually did. <laughs> So I did go to the library because, I don't know, the library is my happy place. What can I say? The, the library is my happy place. So yesterday I went for a nice walk. I went out. I had to do errands and do things. So I was like, I might as well just go to the library. I had to return books anyway. So I had to go in and there was no way that I was leaving the library without some books I was gonna say without one book but I know that I just can't go in there for just one book they it's like I know this is a lot but if you ever go to the library or even if you go to a bookstore or anything or any place where there's just a plethora of books it's like you go in for one book you're like okay I'm looking for this book this author this title this color book um, and then you're walking around and sorry if you do hear that noise someone is moving something there's this big truck in front of my house i don't know i i, I wasn't nosy this morning because i was cleaning my house but anyway so back to what i was saying so you know the books i like, call you like you're just like you know let me look for this book and the way my library is structured first as soon as you walk into the library they have a cart of free books okay so that gets to me like i see i'm like oh free books it's free i don't have to return them they're mine i can keep them so i always check that little section out because you know it's a hit or miss and then as soon as you walk in like seriously you're confronted with the new book section and it's like the way that they <laughs> they um market the new books it's like you go in and you're like, oh my gosh, look at that book. And then you just get sucked into the world of books. And I go in there and I'm like, I want this book. I want that book. I want to read this. Book. This one looks interesting. I never heard of this book. Oh, I read, I read a book by that author. And it just goes on and on and on. And so you go in for one particular book. You get other books. You probably forget the book that you went to look for. But yes. And then I was so upset because... I knew I saw the truck that ships books from different libraries to come to my library. I saw it there and there was a book I was waiting for. But it wasn't ready till after I left and I was like, I'm not going back down here again. Cause I moved and so the library isn't as close to me as it was before. Um, so yes. So these are the books that I decided to get. I'm gonna start with the children's books first and then go on i'm sorry if my nose is a little stuffy um i was dusting and as a person who's allergic to dust that wasn't good but here we are so i decided to get some children's books one because that is me i am a pre-k teacher i love what i do um i will be I hope everything goes the way it's supposed to that I will be returning um, I was on a leave of absence due to a medical emergency and so I'm recovering from that so I will say the library and books has helped me in uh, my recovery and my healing and everything like that so um, yes but I do want to get back into reading a lot of more a lot more children's books picture books because I like to kind of see what's new, what's out there, some different things to read um, to the kids. So, the first one I got was this one. It is called I'm New Here. And it is about children who are going to a new school. There is a child who is coming from Guatemala, a Korea, Korea and Somalia and now they're in the United States so it's just kind of going through their tra transition of being the new new student new child in a new school in a new country so I figured this one would be a great read for um, 
children to know that there are many different um, different ethnic cultural cultures um, and children in your classroom and I know um, where I live there is a plethora of um, ethnicities and cultures so I think that would be a great book to read I also picked this one this is one of the new books that's not my name and I believe that the little girl in the classroom many people cannot pronounce her name now I <laughs> I I I sympathize and I completely understand this book it's funny my mom named all of her children except for my brother go figure <laughs> very complicated and, and they're not complicated but to pronounce the name it's like so yeah my name I get Jari Jerry Jerry daddy all it's different pronunciations of my name and it's like my name is Jerry <laughs> so I figured this will be great to read especially for children who do have names that are very hard to pronounce because a lot of children, believe it or not, I believe I was always like, why isn't my name easier or to understand or to print? Or one thing that I cannot stand is that, you know, you have like the cups or the souvenirs or whatever, and they're like common names like Jane and Fred and John and Barbara. And it's like, I can never find my name. I can never find my name. So, and this little girl, look at her. I should have had my little pigtails in my hair because I'd be like, that's not my name. <laughs> so I can't wait to see that, read that book. This one, I saw, I think I saw this. It was in one of those either book talk or on Pinterest regarding like diverse reads. No, it was our library. So my library has on their website, like reading out of your like comfort zone books, like diverse books reading out of what you normally read or reading books by the diverse um, characters, authors, um, and abilities. Um, I work in a pre-K setting and I my classroom is inclusive. So we have a variety of abilities in my classroom. And this book, A Friend for Henry, is about a boy who's trying to I guess find a friend but he um, is autistic um, and this would be a great book to read to show how some children react to certain things um, I know going through my my own medical emergency uh, now um, being overstimulated the temperature in the room you know too many voices too many things that's that's becoming a trigger for me and um many people don't real, realize that unless i say something but even if my reaction or my body language says anything different they may not understand so i think this would be a great read to read to the to the class to explain that there are some friends that some children in the classroom i'm used to saying friends when i talk about the students in the classroom so if I was reading this to the class, I would talk to my friends and say, hey, there's some friends in our classroom who um, have a hard time sharing what makes them uncomfortable. And they still want to be your friend, but you have to understand that they may not be as comfortable with you being close to them, talking loud, touching their things. So I'm excited for this one. And all of these books are most likely going to be reading to my son. Um, or I might make, um, I do want to get back and re uh, recording me reading to share with other children who may not be in school or um, other things like that. I have two young nephews and, uh, and nieces that um, probably will enjoy having their aunt, their aunt read to them. So uh, yeah, I might share those with them as well. My last children's book is called Her Stories, and it's African, African American Folk Tales, Fairy Tales, and True Tales. Now, I am becoming a lover of folk tales, fairy tales, um, folklore, 
that type of thing. I I don't know if it's it's I'm coming into this like cottage core style, but I am loving folk tales. I love fairy tales. I love um, retellings and things like that. So um, I thought this would be great, and I really want to diversify my folk tales and my fairy tales. So I did see one of Indian folk tales um, from people from India. Um, and I also saw one from the library. I believe it was Vietnamese. So, yes. And I love seeing how folk tales, like a tale, like let's say um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Well, we know that story, but it may be translated into other animals, other people in different places. So I like seeing the similarities and the differences and yes, this looks amazing. And my son, he actually, um, we read a couple of fairy tales at night. So he's been loving reading fairy tales in the evening. So yes, those are my children's books. On to my adult books. I am going to split it up between nonfiction and fiction. So I will get to the nonfiction first because it was right there closer to me. So the first one is Grieving, Lo Grieving Loss, and Healing, 101 Stories of Comfort and Moving Forward. Um, I lost my mom back in March, March 12th. I will, that date will forever be ingrained in my head. Um, but I am moving through the healing process. I've been going through a lot of therapy and grief counseling. And at first I was reading some grief books and it hit, it was just way too soon. And I'm coming into the place where I am comfortable reading about grief or loss. Um, there are a few stories that I kind of skimmed through. This was one of the new books that I saw and I like skimmed through and they're very short, which I'm, I'm grateful for, but a lot of what they're saying is very relatable. If you lost a person, um, there are their headings um, about, oh, how it hurts, saying goodbye, let it out, the new normal, honoring and remembering moving forward it takes a village words of wisdom finding new purpose and love that doesn't die and um i am slowly writing my own my own journals my own writings regarding grief and loss and just reading the comfort just reading just comfort and encouragement um during a very difficult time is great so i can't wait to read this i'm gonna take it little by little um, each day because I don't want to overwhelm myself but yes and my next new book see it's that new section at the library I told you this is The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel this is an older book I don't believe that old but this I, I did not know that it was there was a movie I think I did I think I saw it on like Peacock or Hulu or Amazon Prime one of those streaming services but the case for christ it is lee about lee strobel he was an atheist um and he has now become a believer and he is um really writing about the evidence it looks like it's in like a interview form he he was i'm not sure if he still is a journalist um but yes, it's going through the investigation about Jesus. I am a Christian. I am a Christ follower. Um, if you are going to watch any of my videos, I will read nonfiction books I will about Christianity and even other religions. I am one that um, I love Jesus. I, you know, I don't want to um, offend people, but, you know, I love to research and read about other cultures and other religions. Um, but I like to, I want to build my faith and reading nonfiction Christian literature is um, a part of that process. So I thought 
when I saw this on the news section, I had to pick it up to read it. And I do a join, I do join, I join. I do join or attend uh, my church's theology class that we have. And my pastor referenced this book. So once I saw it and I was like, yes, I'm going to read it. Now on to the non, no, blah, 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 blah. On to the fiction books. So, again, a new book. This one. Look at that. Harlem Sunset. I, I think, I don't know if I stress this in a lot of the videos that I've made so far, but one thing that you will get, that you will get from me in a book haul or a book review or whatever is a book during the Harlem Renaissance, the 1920s to the end of World War II. Maybe the Cold War. I'm slowly getting into that time frame. But I love that era. Between the 1920s and the end of World War II, that is my era. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know why I am a fan of that time. But, like I, the, like I always tell people, the music, the fashion, the TV shows, the literature, the entertainment, the culture, all of that. Despite it being a rough time, I love it and. As soon as I saw this stick out, I was like, I had to get it out. It's, it is a mystery. I really don't know what it's about. But all I saw was Harlem 1927 and 27-year-old Louise Lloyd has found the perfect job. She's the manager of the Dub, a club owned by her close friend. And I'm assuming that there has been some murders and maybe they're trying to figure it, find out who did it. I don't know. But... Harlem Sunset, that cover, the 19, 1927, say no more. I am going to read it. If it's not enjoyable, I mean, it's not that long. It's like 284, 86 pages. Yes. It's, oh, I saw something like it's like... Ooh. I guess almost like comparable. Did it say comparable to The Great Gatsby? I don't know. I guess so. So I'm going to read it. <sighs> In Search of a Prince. This is not a new book, but I have saw a few booktuber Christian booktubers who were reading this book who got this book who hauled this book and like I said I am a Christian I read a lot of Christian fiction nonfiction romance Amish books all that type so to see a romance Christian fiction book sounds amazing uh, I don't know what it's about, but it looks like it's about a girl becoming a princess. Oh, she is a teacher in New York City. However, when her mom tells her that she's actually a princess on a coat off the coast of Africa, she has to assume that position since her grandfather, the king, is um, really sick. So, In Search of a Prince, I guess so. The cover is gorgeous, look at her. That dress, oh my goodness, gorgeous. So, I, I mean, I like all type of romance books, but sometimes I want something clean and sweet. So I'm hoping that this one will not um, upset me. 
you know. And the last book I have is The Stationery Shop. And I follow a booktuber named Emmy. Um, and I will try, I will try and make sure that I link some of the people that I saw the books or whatever in, um, down below in the description. But I saw that she was listening to this via audiobook. And one, the cover is amazing. But two, it is set in 1950s Tehran in Iraq or Iran. Iran, I believe. And another place, which is re really weird. I love Middle Eastern countries, the culture. So 1950s in Tehran. Uh, um, it looks like a girl. Um, I guess she finds some romance in the stationery shop, um, but is during a lot of political um, upheaval, and and that which I do know a lot of a lot of the countries over there had a lot of political uprisings and things. So I'm excited to read this book. So those are, as I was like relaxing, <laughs> those are, oh, I don't even know if I can do this, the books that I got from the library. I probably will be starting with the children's books first because those are going to be my quick ones and enjoyable ones and, um, you know, they make me happy. Children's books makes me happy. And, of course, I am going to slowly read a little bit of this. And I'm going to start this one. And I'm going to probably read a little bit of this one, too. I started this in the car when I was taking my daughter to work. And it looks like it's going to be some, st some heavy stuff. There are, in this book, there are, like questions for like reflection and also like other resources so I probably will have to read this separate because just the way my brain is working right now that I'm going to want to take some time to really dive into this book and if it's something that I really 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 which I know like I might just buy this book just to keep for my own reference um yeah but this one is going to be but I know for sure I'm going to try this one soon because, you know, 1920s, I'm in love. So that is what I got from the library. Um, one thing I will end this with is support your local libraries. Um, I love my library. I've said it earlier, um, the library is my happy place. Um, literally the week that we were dealing with my mom's uh, funeral arrangements and stuff i was finding myself at the library just about every day devouring books just being among the books um the librarians there the workers there are amazing um even some a lot of the patrons i've become friends with kids that i have taught <laughs> uh, go to the library so Find your local library and support it. There are so many great, um, great resources that the library does provide. Um, I'm not sponsored by the library, but I'm telling you, if my local library, I was about ready to say where I'm from, but if my local library watches this and sees this video, like, you know, <laughs> hey, sponsor me, do something that I can help, you know, bring more patients to the library. But... I am a lover library. I have took I have taken my children to the library growing up. My youngest son was my son's in the trash. My youngest son was like brought up in the library. Like he was a baby going to the library. So find your local library, support it, um, check it out, user resources, and yes. And find some joy 
life is rough there's so much going on oh i hate myself there's so much going on in the world today that um you need to find some joy and maybe going to the library and finding a cute little book a book that's gonna make you happy <laughs> you know i don't know i was just trying to make you smile but yeah find some joy